All right, there's a lot to do here. Caged catches. Hell yeah. I don't know if I'm going to have room for those, though. Because who knows, maybe I might get stuff from what I'm going to do. Let's do Mr. Menagerie first. Mr. Menagerie is passing through the House of Rods and Chains. The cloaked figure looks up as you approach. Its garnet-hued eyes gleam from the darkness of its hood. Scouts, it rasps, hopefully, its voice like a cleaver on a whetstone. We trade scouts for things and stories. It leans closer to you. We're leaving soon. Okay, remember I tried to show them the seal of Mr. Barleycorn a while ago, but they didn't want to see it until they had completed their journey? I think this is the end of their journey. If I buy something or do something, I think they might just leave, even if... I mean, being the end of the journey, maybe they won't leave. But I don't want to take the risk. Let's do the quest thing. Is Mr. Menagerie one of the seven Mr. Barleycorn is looking for? Um, oh no, are we not done yet? Follow Mr. Menagerie to the end of its journey. It might be more receptive to the seal then. Oh, I... Th for some reason I thought this was the end. I guess because... I mean, they're at Mr. Barleycorn's place. It seemed like a natural end. Okay, well then let's buy something. I want all the animals just because they're cool. Oh, Ratronaut, I want you, but I don't want to pay a moment of inspiration. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. The Ratronaut is actually even better than the Cavi, right? Because it requires 75 mirrors. You can find up to three discoveries before returning. Oh, little buddy, come here. The Ratronaut glowers as Mr. Menagerie scoops it from its cage. Are we moving again? Can't you find me a locomotive? I want to be in the sky again. I need to feel the light of a star on my tail. Mr. Menagerie holds the creature up and introduces you. The Ratronaut narrows its beady eyes, considering you. Its decision is made. It jumps onto your shoulder and prods your cheek. Come on, Captain. Let's get to it. Mr. Menagerie shakes its head and begins to gather up its things, preparing for the next leg of its journey. I love the Ratronaut already. So, where are you going to be at now? We go where roses bloom in the dark. Well, I guess that's pretty obvious, right? I mean, that'd have to be Caduceus. Do I have 75 mirrors right now? Because I know I've had some stat reductions recently. <laughs> Mostly hearts. I do. Yeah, 77. My poor, poor hearts. They're so sad. Um. Oh, it's in... Do I equip them here? Yeah, they're kind of like inventory. Unfortunately, I wish I could just talk with them, you know? Anyway, Intrepid Cavi, you have served me very well for a very, very long time, buddy. Thank you so much. I'll give you lots of courgettes. Apparently they're a devil for courgettes. Hey, buddy. An intrepid and besuited daredevil eager to prove its mettle out among the stars. Partial to Camembert. All right, I'll buy some cheese for you, buddy. Look at that happy little rat or not. It looks so happy to explore. Such a good little rat. Such a good little knot. Hmm. What next? I think we have some things to give Mr. Barleycorn, if nothing else. And we need to talk to Mr. Barleycorn about the halved as well. But I think we have like at least one seal from another curator to give to Mr. Barleycorn. Was it the Spire of Inches? Is that where they were? Yes. Visit Mr. Barleycorn's study. Oh, there's a lot 
to do here. Oh, I have two seals to give them. Give Mr. Barleycorn the seal of Mr. Pennies. Ah, that one. Mr. Barleycorn dabs the seal in ink and presses it to paper. If the boon of a long life is that one outlasts one mistakes, its curse is that they nip at your heels for eternity. I wonder what Mr. Pennies hides from. Perhaps one day I will ask, before I too beg for protection under the mountain. Begging for protection under the mountain, I assume they're talking about the... What was it called? The Mother Mountain um, at Lustrum? I now have the broken seal of Mr. Pennies. Okay, so I still have a thing, it's just been used. I wonder if I should bring it back to Mr. Pennies? Give them the seal of Mr. Pipes. Perhaps it is true that we live too long. Mr. Barleycorn dabs the seal in ink and presses it to paper. I suppose there are less pleasurable paths to follow, though the emptiness awaiting at the end of that one's will be dark indeed. I favor music myself. A symphony is as potent to me as good wine is to you. Your kind have been bounteous in that regard. So we've already considered Eleutheria's Black Sun. We've done that before. Should I just launch into the ambition? Let's do it. Consult the Midnight Sun about the courtesy. You know it is an agreement between the suns governing their feuds, but what else? What was it that no one else would tell you? The black sun revolves until its spasming eye fills the spire's window. <laughs> the distance between you and it distorts, shortening until the eye fills the sky and you can feel the sun's pole tugging at your weight. Mr. Barleycorn hurries forward, carrying a metal bowl. It's filled with what looks like oil. Drink and listen. You do so. The masked citizen follows suit. Wait, it does not take long. Your mouth begins to itch, then you feel a stab of pain. You lift a hand to it and feel the corner of your lip slowly split open, parting the flesh of your cheek. The citizen cries out. You see their own mouth widen until it stretches from one side of their face to the other, then splits into two. Jesus Christ. A second mouth crawls over their cheekbone to settle on their forehead. Your face writhes and you hear a gasp as your new second mouth takes its first breath. Ask, instructs Mr. Barleycorn. Hmm. Speaking to your second mouth. It has ensconced itself on your forehead. You touch it, feeling familiar lips, gums, teeth, a tongue. When it speaks, though, it is not in your voice, but one of wind and fire. Ask it what the courtesy is. You feel its movements as it answers. An agreement between sons regulating when one of them may kill another. We knew that, the citizen shouts, and then looks appalled as their own new mouth picks up the answer. An order of Legoy that were made to be the agreement's impartial arbiters. They're also charged with keeping the existence of the courtesy and the strife in the heavens a secret from lesser beings. Okay, I want to... Uh, let me take a screenshot of this. This is very, very important and need, needs to go in my notes. Let's read it again. An order of Legoy that were made to be the agreement's impartial arbiters. They're also charged with keeping the existence of the courtesy and the fact that the sons are all fighting each other a secret from lesser beings.
So that was the agreement, is that Lagoy were the ones, the only ones that could kill other sons? Hmm. I wonder if I have a limited number of questions. I hope I can ask them all, but let's assume that it is limited and pick the most interesting one. Ask why the sons are determined to keep the courtesy a secret. Ask what the Lagoy are. Ask how the courtesy keeps its existence a secret. Well, I want to know more about the Lagoy now. Ask what the Lagoy are, apart from being the keepers of the courtesy. Your new mouth purses its lips as if considering how to answer. The masked citizens is more eager and butts in. A logos is a word of living fire, it says, flame licking from its tongue. Spoken into being by a judgment to fulfill a specific function. That is entirely false, your own mouth responds. But it will do. If it's entirely false, how will that do? Oh, good, I can ask other questions. Ask why the sons are determined to keep the courtesy a secret. Both you and the masked citizen's second mouths fall silent, considering the question. You and the masked citizen exchange a look. Beyond the window, the black sun seeds its attention fixed upon you. To keep up appearances, the masked citizen's original mouth says with a dawning realization, because the greatest are subject to the same follies as the least. Even the sons indulge in spite and pettiness and murder. There is no state of grace. And, your new mouth says, perhaps because for every law, there is a loophole. Hmm. They want to appear perfect and all-powerful, but they're not, and the loophole comment. They want to limit how many people know about the courtesy because people might find out that there's a loophole for it. Even lesser beings could find it. Ask how the courtesy keeps its existence a secret. Did your friend fall afoul of it? You feel the heat of its voice wash across your face as your new mouth responds. They use the fire that follows to find those who would betray it and punish them. If necessary, a logos of the courtesy will physically substantiate to finalize matters. The fire that follows, wait, wait, <clears throat> anybody else thinking about the blue flame that we've seen? Is that the fire following me? Hmm. I'm going to take screenshots of everything here. <laughs> Withdraw. Mr. Barleycorn lumbers forward. Your audience is concluded. Enough. The masked citizen's second mouth snaps. Answers have been given. Understanding bestowed. We will not speak again except in one instance. Should it come to pass. Wait, what instance? Hmm. The mouths crawled down, down face and, and neck to position themselves more discreetly. You can feel it when your clothes catch on it. Ugh. Eletheria's midnight sun withdraws gradually from the window, but the thudding pressure of its attention is still on you. If it is possible, it seems pleased. Mr. Barleycorn stands. 
Please leave, it says. When you return to your engine, the masked citizen says, I would very much like to go home, and locks themselves in their cabin. Yeah, that's a common response to these people that, <laughs> that I take to experience all the glories of the suns. They're like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Bye. You've learned something you should not. And yes, it's a picture of like that bluish flame. That is the flame that follows. Hmm. Can we go back to Mr. Barleycorn? Is there any reason to? I think I should close this and go back in. It's a little bit laggy. Nope, that's it. <clears throat> Alright, let's meet the rubbery men again then. Oh, retrieve my amber. Oh, I set people out to gather amber. They should have returned from their scouting trip. Pity there's no room for your old crew. <laughs> um. They should have returned from their scouting trip. Yeah, probably like... God, it probably literally is more than a year ago that they that I sent them out on that trip. Oh. Uh, well, I want to send more people out to do another expedition. Can I do that before retrieving my crew? So I can send them out, I'd lose crew, and then retrieve these and gain the crew back? I don't know. Let's see. I forgot where all these things go. What's in the shell? Just a description. Ruins. Oh, that's Mr. Barleycorn's place. So then, back into the house. Here we go. These are the rubbery men's place. Get a port report. Offer a passage to a rubbery man. Yep. They... Looks like they all just want to go to Pan. Attend the lament of false hope. Gain an Eletherian mystery. One more mystery and I can get one moment of inspiration. <clears throat> to send deeper into the house. I think you gotta go down, down, down to send out an expedition. Shaping vats. The drowning coils? What was this? Just a description. Head deeper. Ah, I think I do have to retrieve my amber before I can send out another crew. Okay. Five chunks of soft amber, two chunks of blue. You meet up with the crew at the designated spot, and they dish out what amber they've been able to find. They ask about being returned to the locomotive. Alas, there is just no room. <laughs> I'm such a dick. They've been stranded here for like a year. Oh, that took me all the way back to the top side? What the heck? Alright, let's go back down again. Yeah, assign crew to hunt for amber. Three supplies, that's fine. Only takes five crew members. I wish I could send out like different sized crews, you know, to get more with more crew. Does exploring the vast cavern do anything? Nope. <clears throat> I probably don't have enough amber to do any shapeling stuff. I don't know, maybe. I got a bunch of soft amber. It seems like... Uh, it says the simplest form, the best for experimentation. Well, I don't think just soft amber would do anything, right? Doesn't it need to be a combination? I don't know. Let's try it, though. You stir the pot already filled with exuded juices in the crust of past experiments. The rubbery men watch with what might even be amusement as you wrestle with the large wooden paddle while the amber melts. Oh, I don't necessarily mix different colors of amber, but I mix items into the amber. Swirling amber mixes with the substances of shaping. You can experiment by adding up to four other ingredients to turn your sample into a new form. 
you may also get condemned experiments. The mixture is liquid and runny. Oh, this is beautiful. A, add a caddy of dried tea. A taste of British culture should help civilize the mixture. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, let's do that. A rubbery man draws a boiling, milky liquid from another vat and indicates that you should use it to make the tea. Dark, viscous liquid floats to the top. A more watery, chocolate-colored substance settles underneath. You add it to the vat. Let's add a gourd of chorister nectar. A drop of honey should sweeten this pot. A rubbery man reaches for your arm as you prepare to add the nectar to the pot. It licks one drop, then guzzles the rest down with lip-smacking gusto. Five minutes later, it returns with a bowl of paste for the vat. Um... Thanks. Let's complete it. Let it simmer, finish hardening, free the color from within. You turn the tap on the vat. The rubbery men lean in to see how you did. Unfortunately, only plain amber drips out. Perhaps you didn't add enough ingredients, or perhaps your experiments drained the individuality out of the sample. Hmm. So basically I just lost those items, but got the chunks of soft amber back. Okay. Well, it's not like the items were worth a ton to me anyway, so let's try again. Is this to turn soft amber into colored amber? Like this. Um, add a caged catch to the vat, uh, or at least its blood. It should only need a few drops. Like that would be its blood, so it would be red. Is that going to turn into red amber? Your knife cuts deep into the creature's flesh. The rubbery men shrink away from you. I don't blame them. Once you're finished, one of them takes and burns the corpse with almost reverential care. Let's see what that does. Oh, failed. The rubbery men lean in as you break the hard surface of the mixture to get to the amber inside. Unfortunately, only black ooze awaits. They chitter with disappointment. Oh, I didn't even get a condemned experiment or anything, just nothing. Well, I think that's like all my items that I could add, so... Not any point. What if I just add soft amber? And then just complete it, what happens? Um... Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, you just get one back. Okay. <laughs> All right, wonderful. That's all for down here. Let's go to the marketplace. Unlock this with one chunk of red amber, a chunk of green, and a chunk of blue. Apparently I have all of those. Commingle your choirs with a rubbery man. Hmm. Hmm, I can treat Eletherian Mysteries for Amber. Not worth it, unfortunately, because I desperately need moments of inspiration. What does co-mingling my choirs mean, aside from being a euphemism? Oh, it just uh, did something bad to my soul, I think, and I gained five tales of terror. Hmm. In a dark, moist alcove, you sing softly together. The harmonies are intricate and intimate. Tentacles twine fondly around your fingers. Your foreheads rest together, its skin spongy and slick against yours. You can almost feel its thoughts flashing inches from yours. I think I'm done here. Um, what exactly has been done to my soul? Is it going to prevent me from going into Caduceus? Let, let me leave. It's getting laggy. Fermented. I don't think that'll prevent me from going in. I think it's like... 
Hmm. It was lightless and something else, I think. It should be fine. Alright, let's buy the caged catches then. And let's go counterclockwise from here. Let's go over to Paranessi. Hopefully enough time has passed for me to go back in. I think I have to wait two weeks? Yeah, definitely two weeks have passed. At least by the time I get there. And we got all this unexplored stuff along the way. Oh yeah, and we get to try out our new um, Retronaut. Can find up to three things at one time. Oh, that's such a cool sound. Like marching music. Oh boy. The man of fire. Okay, yeah, the fire that follows. A knock at your door in the night. You open it and find a crewman slumped in the corridors. Is he alright? His skin is scalding. And what's that on his neck? Words written on his skin? A confession? He looks up. His eyes shine as if candles burned in them. He opens his mouth. It's lit from below by the blue fires burning in his belly. He stands and lurches forward. Uh, slam the door or shoot him dead? Hmm. 20% 20 20 chance of success at slamming the door, 48 at shooting them. I mean, it's one of my own crew. I don't want to shoot them because it's like, I don't know that they're gone forever. They might be fine. They're, it seems like they're just possessed. Slam the door and barricade yourself in. Failure. Blue flame gushes from his mouth, igniting him in a column of raging fire. You slam the door, but his arm is already reaching for you. His hand clutches your shoulder. Your sleeve ignites and words blossom on your skin like a brand. I have lost count of how many of my crew have died. I cannot remember their faces. Then the names of the crew that have died under your command begin to sear themselves into your skin in a dense scribble. No, oh, Jesus. You barge the door against his arm again and again until it pulls back. You shove the door closed, but blue flames begin to lick beneath. Then you hear raised voices. Your officers? Gunshots. Then a voice. Captain, are you alright? Before you open the door, you wrap a sheet around your shoulders, hiding your brand. Lost that one crew and lost one hearts. Our chest ever more frozen. It's not going to stop me. The fire that follows can follow as much as it wants. It can show itself. I hope it does. Holly wobbles. <laughs> Blah. 
Mind Hermitage. So I want mysteries. Observe them. Ooh, that's a lot of terror. And one mystery. I can afford one moment of inspiration. Go down here to this thing it just discovered and then up to Paranesi and see if we can spend time in there. floating in space. I've got four crockery on me? That means I must have found three just floating in space, I think. Or maybe four. I don't know if I would even keep one crockery on me. <laughs> 